Greetings and welcome to another episode of Success Secret Show. Do you have a deep desire to become an entrepreneur and create your own startup? Or you're stuck in your journey to create a successful startup or you're an existing startup or entrepreneur who need help to take your startup in next level. Let me share with you, you are not alone. In case you don't know me, my name is Muhammad Usama and I am the host of Success Secret Show. And today we have a very special guest with us. He is Richard Kravchik, who is also known as Mr. Blueprint. He is the author of several books and courses, including his upcoming books titled The Success Blueprint That Never Fails and Leadership Blueprint. One of the top 1% social media influencers globally, he assisted the world-class social media team on behalf of Access Hollywood and the Vanity Fair Social Club in covering 2015 Golden Globe Awards and the 2015 and 2016 Academy Awards. His timeline deliveries on Twitter exceeded one point week, which included the 2016 Academy Awards. During that week, his reach was equivalent to of 10 Super Bowl ads at that time when each Super Bowl ad ran $5.5 million for it. is very active in the blockchain and crypto space where he is the number four blockchain influencer in the world. You may recognize Richard, who co-started in a follow-up movie to The Secret called Pass, CEO of digital marketing agency Blueprint Digital Media and the tech startup Zenith Digital. Plus, Richard is one of those high-end consultants that you hear about online. Make sure to take plenty of notes, as I'm sure Richard will drop lots of valuable knowledge today. Welcome, Richard. It's so nice to have you. Thanks for having me. So let's start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who were you surrounded with that inspired you to become Mr. Blueprint? Gee, well, having a last name that's hard to pronounce or spell was a start, that's for sure. And it kind of, uh, this whole Blueprint thing started in my childhood when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I live in a small town. I used to live in a small town where I grew up, a uh, lake in the hills, Illinois about 45 minutes outside of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, population 5,000, we had one stoplight in our town. Tells you how small it was. I was about uh, one and a half doors down from a horse farm. And the great thing about living in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. The bad thing about it in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. So there was this one time when I was about 12 years old, uh, down at the end of our street, there was the building of a house. And obviously, in a small town like that, all the neighborhood kids take notice. And after, and I was starting to watch everything. I'm, I'm a very observant guy. I kind of watch everything and study everybody. And about 10, 12 days into it, into the process, I, I would see all these trucks that would come in the beginning of the morning. They'd meet, look at these rolls of paper, and they'd go work for the day. At the end of the day, they'd go back and meet with again and look at these rolls of paper. So after a while, I kind of went down there and I asked the, the foreman, you know, big, big guy with a, with a big stogie in his mouth. And I said, you know, I've been watching guys for a while. What are you guys meeting with every day? And he goes, well, you know, we're, we're meeting and looking over blueprints. I go, what's a blueprint? He goes, well, this is specifically how you build this house. If we're off a fraction of, the, of an inch, uh, the doors may not close, your air conditioning may not work, and if the foundation isn't set right, the whole house can come tumbling down. That's how important a blueprint is. And I thought to myself, well, I'm sure there's a blueprint for transistor radios. Yes, I know I'm dating myself by saying that. Uh, cars, uh, relationships, life, businesses. And that was the beginning of the whole Mr. Blueprint uh, thing is uh, basically from my childhood, watching a house being built and seeing the cooperation of others and seeing how specific blueprints can actually build many, many different things in life. That's really cool and amazing. So you did a lot of research in your childhood and you was watching everybody and you know, things like that. So let me know, what are your immediate plans to grow your blueprint business? Oh, well, I have a whole blueprint brand, whether it's blueprint digital media, blueprint capital. Uh, I'm writing a bunch of blueprint books that literally as we speak, I have a book that's coming out here in a few months 
uh, the success blueprint that never fails. Uh, next year, I come out with uh, another book, uh, The Leadership Blueprint, uh, The Ultimate Leadership Blueprint. So I'm really excited about that, especially as we're going into the world in a digital world here where uh, you know people are tweeting that maybe shouldn't be tweeting. Um, and how leaders use social media or should use social media to help develop their business, their brand, and their persona. Uh, social media can hurt you and it can help you. And uh, that's what the whole leadership blueprint is about. Exactly. So tell us a little, more, a little bit more about your books that you're writing. So what kind of value you're bringing to your readers actually? Well, I, I, I literally have blueprints in the book that you can actually take on your own and say, you know, this, this structure, this format is perfect for me and what I'm doing, though I need to tweak it a little bit with my personality. Here's an example. Uh, a lot of people have a problem of getting in their own way. And they have this mental prison about themselves and they're st stuck in this mental prison and it's a self-created uh, mental prison. Uh, there were times that you know, we never thought we'd break the four-minute mile, and we did. Uh, there were times where uh, you know, we have Alcatraz, the unescapable uh, prison, because everybody had, even the worst of the worst criminals were in Alcatraz, and it was hard to escape. Matter of fact, the worst of the worst criminals in the world were there. But you know, your mental prison is even more confining to you than Alcatraz Island, where they had the worst of the worst criminals like Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, and sorry, I'm from Chicago, where I was born and raised, so it's all a gangster type stuff. Right. Uh, but there were some really nasty people. There were some really nasty people there. But the prison of your mind is even more confining than Alcatraz. So once you escape your mental prison, the world is literally your oyster. That's amazing. So it's all about escaping your mental prison to grow up your business and each and everything. So Richard, share the most important three actionable steps that others can get as a cheat sheet from your blueprint and implement right now in their businesses. Three steps. Oh, geez. Um, first, have a set of written goals. That's a step number one. And review those goals first thing in the morning and before you go to bed at night. You have to do that to make sure you're on track to what you really want to do because if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Um, there were uh, plenty of people in the day when Oprah Winfrey had her own show on network TV here in the States in America. And there were all these authors that said, you know, I want to be on Oprah Winfrey and I'm going to think I'm a success in doing that. Even if they sold 50,000 books and if they weren't on Oprah, they felt like they were a failure, even though, you know, if you can sell 5,000 copies of a book in a lifetime, you're a success. They would sell 50 and still think that they were a failure because they weren't on Oprah. So have goals and make sure you actually have actionable steps behind those goals so you know exactly how to get to where you want to go. That's step number one. Step number two, find mentors, okay? Find out at least five people that have already done what you're trying to do, break it down, find some commonalities, and your learning curve will just go right up. Because let's just say if you want to uh, find five people that have um, done a successful startup, or five couples that have been married for 30 years, or whatever the case may be, find four or five of those people, break that down, and find a good mentor to be able to do that, to be able to kind of work that process for you. And step number three is being able to, it's a military type of saying out here, is uh, adapt, improvise, and overcome. And what I mean by that, you're always going to have some landmines. You're always gonna have some potholes in the road to success. And you have to be able to adapt to what that landscape is, improvise, even though you're still going towards your goals, you may have to just switch the, the road a little bit and overcome any obstacles that you may have because you are going to have obstacles. You know, the road to success is in a clear path where the road to success, whether it be um, having a very fit lifestyle um, because you may have some health issues or whether it's getting funding for a startup or exploding your startup on social media. 
there is going to be some pitfalls and you have to be able to adapt, improvise, and overcome. So those three steps again is have written goals with steps to be able to achieve them. Number two, find mentors to be able to increase your learning curve and make everything go a lot faster. And number three, adapt, improvise, and overcome. That's amazing. So these three steps can actually help anybody to get successful in life. So go ahead and follow the viewers. Viewers, if you have any questions, please comment down below and we will acknowledge soon. Richard, what is the single most failure that you recall from your professional life and what was lesson learned and how did you recover from it? Well, I've had plenty of failures. Um, you know, I, I think I think there was, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, Yoda says, you know, a master has failed more times than a student has tried. And I'm paraphrasing that. I don't want to misquote Yoda um, for all the Star Wars fans out there. Um, I think my biggest failure that I had was entitlement because I achieved a certain amount of success uh, younger in life and I felt like I was able to kind of just ride that out. And there's a saying we have in America is, is what have you done for me lately? So no matter what you've done in the past, whether it's 10 years ago, 10, men's, uh, 10 months ago, or 10 minutes ago, People are judging you, which is a shame that people judge you, but people judge you exactly what you're doing right now, right this second. So uh, imagine for a moment having a documentary built about your life, filmed on your life. And there's a, one of these GoPros or there's a camera on your shoulder watching you every second of your life. And this video is going to be passed on from generation to generation. Uh, do you want your relatives way out in the future to know that you're really working or you're playing Candy Crush on your phone? Okay. okay. So, uh, so you have to have balance in life, but you have to also make sure that you're actually working hard. So this moment of entitlement, whatever happened in the past is in the past. What matters is what's happening right now in the present. Amazing. So actually focus on the camera on your shoulder. That's what exactly we should do to overcome the failures that that's what you did to overcome your failures and that's a great lesson. So someone who is watching us right now, how they can support you? Uh, let's see here, uh, feel free to reach out to me on social media at the Mr. Blueprint. I'm all over social media with a handle if you go to the Mr. Blueprint.com. I actually answer all correspondents that, that come to me personally. Um, so reach out to me, I'm happy to help everybody. That's awesome. Amazing. Richard, what would you like to say as a final word to our viewers? Final word is stick to your heart, stick to your soul, do whatever makes your soul happy, and make sure you're very, very persistent and consistent in reaching your goal. I have faith that you can actually do whatever you want to, but you actually have to make the effort. And if you work smarter and harder than everybody else, you're going to get there. Amazing. So thank you so much, Richard. On the behalf of Success Seekers team and our viewers and entire community of Success Seekers show, once again, thank you so much for introducing your new books. And hopefully you are launching them soon when they are coming to the market so our viewers can get a copy of them if, if you like it. Awesome. I'll let you know. That will be awesome. So guys, keep watching Success Seekers show. See you with another amazing guest very soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.